Some fans of Kubrick's Eyes Wide Shut may be surprised that the story had been done before. Based on the novella, Trom Novel, or Dream Story, by Arthur Schnitzler, it was adapted for Austrian television in 1969. Fortunately, it's available on YouTube, at least at the time of this video's original posting. And here are my initial thoughts. I'm only comparing the two adaptations to the source material, one by Stanley Kubrick and the other by Wolfgang Gluck. I hope I got that right, and not the source material itself, since I haven't read it yet. Because it's my first viewing and navigating subtitles, I may get a couple things wrong. That's the very reason these are my first thoughts. The reactions I share here may trigger anxiety, rage, or disbelief. But that's why you're here, I hope. Please consider leaving a like, share, or subscribe if you enjoy this content. One click from you is like a Mardi Gras for me. Sit back, choose your favorite mask, and sneak inside. Here are my first impressions of the 1969 version of Eyes Wide Shut. Parallel Universes There's a lot in common between Kubrick's vision and its 1969 counterpart. So much and so rare that two different versions could be so faithful to one another. Both share most all the same characters, although with different names. We still have the Doctor, Bill or Fredolin, the wife, Alice or Albertine, and their daughter, Helena, who likes to read. Both works have Nightingale as the piano player friend who tells him about the sordid party. Kubrick has Domino, the Austrian version has Mitzi. Both were women who walk the streets, so to speak, but nothing happens inside. Domino and Mitzi have a never-seen-together roommate, each accepting presents from a complete stranger. There is a seedy costume store owner with a daughter too mature for her own good. We have Marion with her father. Her fiancé wears glasses in both adaptations. The stories hit the same beats, practically in order. They each talk about a party and events with a sailor. The husband gets jealous, walks out, gets bumped out on the street. Bill or Fredolin gets tempted, but have second thoughts. Both men have serious retrospectives while being driven around by a car or carriage. They invite themselves to a secret party with the help of borrowed costumes. They get kicked out with a warning, however not without a human sacrifice but they want back in. Meanwhile, Nightingale disappears. They both learn of bad news in the newspapers and visit the morgue. Each story ends with the missing mask revealed on their bed. Then the men confess with an ending that's equally anticlimactic. It's abbreviated. The Austrian teledrama has a runtime clocking in at 1 hour and 15 minutes. Meanwhile, Eyes Wide Shut is over two and a half hours long. While there's a lot of the Austrian story within Kubrick's, Kubrick builds on the lore and adds his own beginning and end. The party Fredolin and Albertine talk about in the beginning, we see Bill and Alice attend. Instead of talking about what they saw and did there, we see Sandor dance with Alice. Bill gets distracted by two young women. There's a whole side quest upstairs in Victor's bathroom where Bill saves Mandy's life. Mandy is a new character not seen in the Austrian drama. Although she takes some of the role from Mitzi, as it is Mandy who shows up at the secret party and not Domino. There's more, um, to see in Eyes Wide Shut when it comes to the party, although the critics were unimpressed. <coughs> through different styles and storytelling, which we'll get through next. Both events are something Fredolin or Bill want to be part of. It's eyes wide shut that adds a bit of formality with a single big baddie to openly threaten Bill. The final discussion between Bill and Victor? That's new too, as Victor is a creation of Kubrick, and the closest thing to a personified foil to Bill's pursuit of enlightenment. Without Victor, we have a story about a doctor, husband, and father in conflict with himself. With Victor, the story changes, at least a little bit, to debate who is in Bill's way of happiness, Victor 
Alice, or himself. Tell and not show. The Austrian production depended on exposition. It had to. Because there was little over an hour to tell the story. If you watch Eyes Wide Shut first, be honest, that's most of you, you'll learn quickly that Trom Novell wants to talk more and show less. Whether it was out of budget constraints, the opening scene plays out like theater, and you hear their marriage play out faster than Bill and Alice as they enjoyed a help from the medicine cabinet. In addition, we hear that Fredolin is thinking. Through his words, we are told what he's going through, what he wants, and how life is taunting him. Compare this to Kubrick, where we are spared Bill's inner thoughts. We're left to debate what Bill is thinking. Thanks to Austrian TV, he tells us, if we apply the Austrian narratives to Kubrick's, and we shouldn't, it may answer Bill's motivations that we guessed. The more Fredolin speaks to himself, the more it paints a picture of a world that maybe he's the problem and just doesn't fit in many areas of Vienna. Whereas with Bill, it's ambiguous if the problem is he trying to find justice and meaning in Manny's death, or he's a busybody that should have minded his own business. Kubrick modernized his vision. Dream Story was published in 1926 and set in early 20th century Vienna. Trom Novell subtly touts some turn-of-the-century inventions like the electric lamp and telephone while showcasing a time of candles, oil lanterns, and the horse and buggy. It is also a time for parties. Set during Mardi Gras or Carnival, this explains why people are attending multiple parties and wearing masks. It's also when one can feel more comfortable releasing inhibitions. Kubrick took up other cultural traditions. Christmas is a good excuse for parties, drinks, and dancing. It's also convenient to use the lighting eyes wide shut as remembered for. Set in what was then present day 1999, do we see Kubrick bridging emerging technologies? We see corded phones for landlines when it was still a thing, but Bill does take out the cell phone twice during a time when mobile phones were not so ubiquitous and we were charged by the minute. There are computers as props, closed circuit surveillance video, Finally, we could debate if Domino's malady was a modern bookmark. It was something specifically not present in the earlier decades of the 20th century. Or was it a quiet reference to Trom Novell to a particular, easily overlooked line Mitzi gives to Fredolin? Fewer Villains I've made note how Eyes Wide Shut has its share of antagonists, but no clear villain. Something not common in Hollywood cinema, but such are not uncommon in short stories written or televised. They're often morality plays, and Dream Story counts as one, about conflicts of vice and virtue. Eyes Wide Shut was a two and a half hour, highly marketed film, with famous names starring in it, yet it didn't spoon feed us who the villain was, if any existed. There's Victor, the Red Cloak, even Alice. I even posit that Bill was his own villain. In Trom Novell, there are even fewer candidates. There is no wealthy archetype, no stalker in a trench coat, no red cloak. Only sour guests who didn't want a party crasher. With the aid of Fredolin's expositions, we are left to believe that he and his lust for adventure was his own enemy. It's a story about man versus himself about what he is versus what he wanted to be, at least for a couple nights. He is in pain after several failed attempts of metaphysical release. Oh, what would he have suffered if he had succeeded just once? Let me know in the comments below, have you seen Trom Novell from 1969? Which version do you prefer? This is Mr. G of Synergy saying, happy wife means happy life. Check out other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.